it's a nice way to say, Hey, all the heels want to manage this guy. And, and that just really lays out really a different time in wrestling. It felt like every major heel or hell minor heel, they all had heel managers in this era. And that was also something that harkened back to Vince's dad. Did it not? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much in order to, you know, give mouthpieces and to know exactly what side of the fence they stood on. Uh, do you prefer Johnny V slick, Mr. Fuji, Jimmy Hart? Who was your favorite manager from that era? Oh Bes- God. There's besides Bobby. Come on. Besides. Bobby's the only one. Yeah. It, go- it goes Bobby to Jimmy Hart and drops off after that. Um, was the inspiration for this whole manager thing? Was that taken from the Randy Savage, Miss Elizabeth debut? Because we saw a lot of people vying for his services. Uh, in 1986 and it wound up being the debut of miss Elizabeth. Is that sort of, Hey, this is the, the updated version of that. I think it was, yeah, def- it was definitely similar and, and along the same path. It was a way just to garner interest in him before he ever debuted. So it's going to narrow down on August 29th. All the managers have been ruled out except for one slick. And it's announced the next week that slick and bam, bam are going to make their first appearance together, but it's a swerve, bro. Bammer turns down slick and it's Sir Oliver Humperdinck named as Bammer's manager. And now he's a baby face and he's going to go on to defeat Nikolai Volkov. Was this always the plan tease that he's a heel and then stiff arm him, make him a baby face. And why was Humperdinck the right guy for that? We were looking for, you know, Bam Bam's promo skills were not that good. You know, they, they definitely didn't match his look and trying to find someone who who could talk for him and, and, again, add a little bit more color to Bam Bam Bigelow. And Hump had, had been somebody that had, you know, inquired, wanted to come in and do some different stuff. But um, it, it was new, and, and Bam Bam was new. We were looking for something fresh and new, and – Hump was Hump had never been a baby face. I don't think in his entire career either, but it was just something different. And it was giving a baby face, a manager and, um, bring Humperdinck in as a brand new face. So you got a new face and a new manager and a whole, a whole new life. You got any good Humperdinck stories? It feels like that guy's a real character. Oof. I mean, he looks like a walking, talking gimmick and a half. Um, Well, <laughs> road trips, I ribs. Any, I, I don't know if there's any I can repeat. Come on. Uh, no, Humperdinck, Humper, uh, I, you'd be, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that had anything bad to say about Hump. I'll tell you that. Uh, he just was a really mellow guy, uh, like smoke his pot and just chill out. Um, quite the ladies, man. No. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, it's funny. Just some of the things that, you know, you, you, you form opinions and you form preconceived notions a lot of times before you ever meet someone and then you get to meet them. You see the public, you see the public person, then you meet and you, you, you get to know the private person. Um, yeah. Hump was quite the ladies man. He, 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 he enjoyed, he enjoyed, he really enjoyed the ladies. Did he have anything in common with, um, Alfred Hayes? Yeah. What? Uh, maybe. I'm just asking. I never, I never, uh, you know, did I ask him? No. I hey, just... you got a whale rope in there, pal. What you packing? No. The fuck kind of question is that? Well, you're the one who offered that up about Lord Alfred. We didn't he know was that. Asking me, I saw you. You were like, lo- you were looking at me, and you were going, Alfred Hayes. I did. Oh, that's a lie. You did. You were just thinking about Dong over there. Tell the you. truth. You forget, I can see you. This isn't radio. I can, I can see you too, kind sir. Yeah. All right. So anyway, give me a good Humperdinck story. You got any good ribs? Any good drinking stories? Any marijuana stories? Any? Oh, uh, God. I, yeah. It was always, 
it just was always so much fun to go out with him because you could get really chill and relaxed and you would watch him kind of work the room. You go out to a nightclub or, or what have you, and some people would be absolutely repulsed by his appearance. Um, that's an actual word that would choose to describe him by a young lady one night. You're repulsive. He says, my dear, you're charming and so lovely that I could repulse you all night long. You know, little things like that. that he, you couldn't insult him. You couldn't hurt his feet. He, he just, it, it was, uh, you know, there's, there's certain guys you look at and go, man, I, I don't know how the hell that they would ever get laid type thing. And, and, um, you know, like the cool guys sometimes would sit back in a bar like, oh, I'm not going to go and talk to any of these girls here. I'm too cool for that. Bullshit. Hump was in the middle of it. Hump would talk to anybody and everybody and would all hardly ever walked out alone. <laughs> Just H- Hump knew it was a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and he didn't give up. A friend of ours once said 18%. And I was like, what? 18%. What does that, what does that mean? 18, you ask a hundred chicks, 18 are into it. <laughs> so what's your plan? He's like, I'm going to go ask a hundred chicks. I'm going to take my pick from 18. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think it works that way. Let's see how that works. Well, there's a hundred chicks there to, to choose from. Maybe it would. Yeah. Have you tried this? No. Uh-uh. Didn't have so what's to. What's your percentage? My father-in-law set me up on my deal. So yeah. Yeah. So or, it was an arranged deal. Yes. She didn't have a choice in the matter. If you read the, if you read the internet, right. Huh? So he, he made her, was there any money exchanged? Well, that's what the internet, the internet <laughs> just is like assume. a couple of camels and, and, uh, your first, second and third, fourth born. You can have the third one or it was a collateral for Rick and new mortgage. So, oh, okay. He's, well, he's see, got, that makes sense. Cause you're a mortgage guy. So we got 25 years left and then she's all the pain off. Uh, <laughs> so, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. And you're listening to something to wrestle with. Bruce Pritchard, Bruce, what's going on, man? How are you? You know, not much of anything, man. Just, uh, you know, another day in paradise. And, uh, what can I say? Are you in the, uh, the rumor and innuendo now more than ever before? Do you think? I don't deal in rumor and innuendo. Well, that's what we're here to do today. Debunk. Oh, we're going to the... talk some uh, innuendo and rumor. Now we're going to talk some bam, bam, Bigelow. I'm pumped about this one, man. A little old school. Bam, bam. I love 